Hello everyone, welcome back. Came up with Survival of Sports. Let's take a few minutes to talk about some of the issues and things that uh, of using a 250 gallon propane tank as a barbecue pit. So let's talk about how I overcame some of those issues. Let's start out with the grill. The grill is so wide that if you put this expanded metal in here, that a lot of times it'll bow. That unless you have some type of angle iron, not flat bar, but angle iron. And this is, I believe, hang on just a second. What size is that? That is one inch angle iron. So what I did was I went to a, a, a steel supply store in Beaumont, Texas, and I bought some one inch angle iron. I think it's one inch by one eighth or something like that. And I cut me a piece and then I used C-clamps and I clamped it to the inside of the vessel going all the way down. But before I did that, let's back up a little bit. That what I did is that I took the supports, cut the supports off, rolled them 180 degrees, welded them back on. If you look down here, this is where all the gauges and valves and everything, and that pipe right there is a drain pipe. Then I came in and plugged all the holes, going, draining all the holes. I came in and, and cut a little piece of metal, put it on there, and welded them up so there's only one drain plug with that pipe. So I can put a tray underneath the trailer with a brick in it or something to hold the tray down. Then all the juice is just draining in that tray. Then it, after the cookout, I pick the tray up and go on our merry way. Okay, so one is the supports. Cut the supports off, roll them 180 degrees. Quarter it up meaning you take the circumference of the vessel, divide it into quarters. This is on the center line up here at the top, and they drilled a hole in here to decommission that tank. I didn't do that, they did. Came, come down here to the center line, and then come up about an inch and a quarter or so, inch and a half, and that, the problem with this is it creates a very heavy door. I mean, that is just a lot of steel. Lots, a lot of people may move this door over to here, to a 45 degree angle, have a smaller door, because this is a heavy, heavy door. If that falls on you, then guys, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And so, but to get around, to get around that, I took three lengths of carbon steel chain, divided the door into thirds. This is one inch flat bar right here to seal the, the cut up. One third the distance, one third of the distance, one third the distance. And the local hardware store, local Lowe's, sells these springs right here. And this spring has been on there for about 10 years. About 10 years. And after about six or seven years, it started to lose its strength pretty good. They let it go. And it still it assists just a little bit. But this is what I had in mind, guys. This is what I had in mind. Bring that down. And then we've got two springs with two stainless steel shackles on it. And back there, we, I'm hoping to those little rings back there hold there. I got 800 pound rating on them, but I'd like to replace those with some shackles, stainless steel shackles, but they were out of shackles. Whenever I first built this pit 10 years ago, all I did was just put this one on here, this set of link chain, but I had it planned on being able to go in with another set. So that's what it looks like. So you've got one third is symmetrical, one third, one third, one third the distance. Let's back up so y'all can see that. All right, guys, so this is what happens. Now with these new sh uh, springs on here, I would have let that go. Watch. <coughs> There's no way that door is going to fall, fall down and hit somebody in the head. That's the important thing. Just make sure it does not fall down. Make sure it does not hit anybody in the head. Getting this ready for a big cookout. And then it breaks over right about there. And there we go. And for the welding, used a flux core welding machine. This weld here was made by a $100 flux core welding machine. This weld here was a $400. That one there was like a 3 16 weld, 1 8 weld. This one right here is a nice quarter inch fillet weld. Same thing over here going around. I need to uh, take a wire brush, buff those up a little bit. But now, and then I'm going back over some of these welds, like that right there. Going back over and putting a little bit of more weld on them. <coughs> and so now, the next thing is, is to come over. and see, I've already buffed this up. Put that link up there. Weld it up. Go on the back side. Put that other link on there. Weld it up. 
and this is just some angle iron that I put up here for a stop. That's all that does. If you're wondering what that tank is back there, that is a water tank. That's going to be used for a livestock water tank whenever I build a pole barn. All right, so once you get your head coped in here and get it all cut out, welded up nice, then you just take a cutting torch and open that head up. My, this one here needs to be opened up a little bit more. Got this angle iron here. These are turned one way. That one's turned another way. So this perforated material, expanded metal, cannot go. Cannot move too far. We've got a hot tray up here. This is made from bed frame material. Bed frame material, expanded metal, bed frame material, bed frame material. But this will hold 10 pounds of chicken quarters. I could put 10 pounds of chicken quarters up there and cook those. Well, I've got brisket going down here, and it goes all the way around to the head. This was a mistake. I, I, this was the original smokestack that I put on this pit. And then after I put it on this pit, I realized that, hey, I wanted a smoker. I wanted a smoker. So uh, I took and coped that out, coped it, put it on there, welded it up. And all this is welded on the inside. That was with a $100 welding machine, but it's fully welded on the inside. I mean, it is just very fully welded. I might put some more weld on there, but it's welded all the way on the inside. So this doesn't leak. Uh, the door just came in. These were just regular door hinges. Uh, One-inch flat bar, one-inch flat bar, door hinges, door handle, coupling, thermostat. And the trailer, I did not build the trailer. <coughs> the trailer is off of a welding machine. The guy um, decided he didn't want to weld anymore. He retired. Had the trailer sit down on the side of the road for like $75. Picked it up. Then used a tractor. I had the pit, pit built here. Or I built the pit. Then we used a tractor. My nephew and I used a tractor and a strap and then set the pit on the trailer. Those, those springs get stretched out. They lose their tension. And this one here. Watch. <laughs> that is not going to fall back on anybody's head. Get it down right about here. And then, it, then it breaks over. Nice quarter inch fillet weld holding all that on. Pit's just about finished. It's only taken me about 10 years to do it. <laughs> and a uh, six inch pipe. That's no, really five inch pipe. Some people may say, Kevin, they don't make five inch pipe. Yeah, they do, because there it is right there, guys. That's five inch pipe. And, uh, oh yeah. Hold the smoker closed, link chain, pointed chisel. That's a chisel off of an air gun. Open it up, and there it is. This one here does not get too hot. This is the real smoker one here. Smoked a lot of sausage on there. This one here stays a little warm, so after it gets not sausage, it's done nice and hot. Take and move it down here. Put some more up here. That's it. Oh, yeah. Drain down there. Just to... so I can wipe stuff out of it. Got this up here. This is losing too much heat. I set this up here for a hot plate. It's an inch and a half off the metal. It's too much. Lose too much heat. The uh, almost mainly what this is for is that if you've got something cooked and you just want to keep it mildly warm, and this is big enough for two full pans to sit up here, so I can take the brisket, carve it up, cover uh, cover the brisket up, and then turn uh, put it up here. My weld machine. I built this pit with a hundred dollar weld machine, guys. I'm not kidding. Hundred dollar weld machine. And this is a Procore 125, uses a 110 outlet, uh, well, 120 outlet. Hope you all have enjoyed the video. That's some of the problems that I've had with uh, building a 250-gallon propane tank, turning it into a pit. Is the main thing is supports, turning them around. This little piece of flat bar here keeps the heat from going out. Welding a piece of 1-inch angle iron here. And then putting these cross pieces here. And that keeps that perforated material from sagging. I mean, you could sit hundreds of pounds. I've had 100 pounds of chicken on here at one time. And there's no sag whatsoever. All right, guys and gals, that's it for now. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. And I will talk to y'all later.